This is a message to all viewers, all listeners. As I said before, there will be stories on this channel that may be. This is a message to all viewers, all listeners. As I said before, there will be stories on this channel that may be offensive to some. That may be harsh to some. That may be a little bit hurtful to some. And some people are forced to relive these stories in their mind when they don't want to. So let's just keep in mind that when we put these stories together, we're not on here trying to glorify anything. We're not on here trying to glamorize the criminal lifestyle. We're on here documenting actual history and giving people the opportunity to explain to the world how their life went astray and they ended up going down the wrong path. So once again, let's be respectful and let's learn something. And I know you hear about my name, but I never did nothing to nobody that ain't deserve it, man. You know what I mean? So maybe you ain't wanna fuck with me for what you hear about me. The niggas real with me, I'm real with them. Yes, bro, so you know, like LG has history, man. Like, you know, and all ever, we was we was doing our thing, but before us, even before us, you know, we had a we had a we had some good dudes in our LG that was about that money, you know. We had my bro Swells and them from the front. And Swells came through with Bash Sean and a few other dudes, you know. They, they, they was in the projects for a minute. They was doing they, they had it, you know. You know, I ain't gonna speak about that situation too much because the brother Swells is on the pills right now, about to come home. You know, he's been down like 33 years, man. And he's trying to get that back, and it's looking good from this paper. So I just wish and salute. Everything works good for my brother Swells, man. One of LG's finest, for real. But um, then after that situation, you know, it came, a um, little bit before the action, it was on uh, my man, um, uh, Shavar. Shavar from Ben Van Aver. You know, he, he should come through. Shavar should come through heavy with my man Moose and LG. And, you know, he, he was about his paper. And, you know, he used to put us on. He the first, you know, he blessing us, you know, showing us the rope. You know, and everybody looked up to Shavar. Cool, dude. And he read, him and Polite was cool. Now, Polite is from Bedford Avenue. You know, Bedford Avenue. And, and decap over that area. And he's right next door to Shavar. So they grew up together. So a situation happened where Vaughn K was killed. Vaughn K was killed in LG behind my building. You know, and Polite was with him. You know, so in that situation, you know, there was a hit on Vaughn K. He dropped. The light was there. The light, I guess K had jewelry or whatever that was on the floor, whatever what happened was, and the light took the jewelry and ran off. So people saw that. And I was in a similar situation like that, so I could understand how she gets fucked up, you know? But, you know, at the end of the day, we know Polite didn't do that, you know? But they locked him up for the murder. They locked him up for the murder of Ron K. Now, when he's on Rackers Island, he's calling Sherrod to get him out. And Sherrod finally bailed him out uh, eight months later. He ended up beating the body because he ain't do it, but he got bailed out. The light came home on some shit like, you know, that it should have took too long to bail me out. You know, he told some type of way about it. So what he do, he flipped on Sherrod and bagged and booked Sherrod for a brick and some cash, you know, and booked him. Shavar wasn't like that. Shavar wasn't a killer. Shavar was just a money getting dude, trying to get his money and chill. So that was that was the easy robbery for him. You know what I mean? Then Polite just came strong after that joke, kid. You know what I mean? He just he just he just put a team together, him, Micah, and my man Knowledge from LG. Mr. C brothers. Mr. C had brothers, you know they looked at the project. He had a few brothers. Baby D and Randy, you know what I mean? And, and, and his name Randy's Knowledge Knowledge and he had other brother Shannon you know he's my gosh but Knowledge and Baby D was in the streets you know and Knowledge hooked up with Polite and Polite and Micah yo them dudes after that jokes man they dudes started coming through looking crazy trying like like Mr. T man the change you see everything change from there then like a month later they back to back um what's them the fucking Jeep from the 
Suzuki, the what's them dudes, the little jinx has them on? Suzuki. Suzuki. Yeah, Suzuki, the sidekicks with the main system. Yo, they was pulling up, lads. Talking about pulling up, crazy. Like, it's getting crazy with their paper. They, they stepping the game up. Yeah, yeah. Then, you know, Shiraz was out of sight, laying low from me, you know. Man, they just took over, son. They were coming to LGs, and they was fucking with my man Wise. Now they all get down together, you know? And then they opened up a spot on Spencer Street. And that shit was off the meat right like, here. That shit was crazy, you know? And then Micah started messing with Jill. Jill from my project. Now, remember Jill is one of the girls I was telling about, the Boosting girls. Red, Tawana, Keisha, you know, Sean, rest in peace. You know, they was taking this. And them girls there, oh my gosh. They took it to another level. And Micah started messing with her. You know, and they was dealing with each other. So Mike would come in the projects and Polite and coming through, pulling up, you know? And and like it was it was all love, my nigga. And then they was fighting on Spencer. Then now from Spencer Street, they get so much money and they don't have they're not networking right. So remember I told you Wise and my brother was cool. I went up north. I was up north at this time. Right? So when I go up north, my mother went away for the summer. So my brother got the crib to sell from the project. So Wise went to Polite. I was like, yo, my man Ralph, he got the crib for self, you know, for the summer. You know, why don't you go holla at him? And Wise and Polite, I mean, my brother and Polite went to one serve together, 117. So they was cool, you know? So they pushed up on him, and they, they, they pushed up on my brother, talked to him, he blessed my brother, and they used that as the bag of the crib to like hold the shit, you know what I mean? So they used to hold the work in there, he's bagged up. So he told my brother to recruit a team and get some people to bag up, which my brother did. And he had some dudes in there bagging up, and it was just like working. Like, that was like the Carter, kid. Like the Carter that did, that was way before that, my nigga. You know, and they was, they was in there doing it. And then it got to a point, you know, where you no, know, it was getting too much money. So then they started, boom, having it in the crib. Now they're in the crib, getting the money rolling, everything's rolling. Then now people are hearing about it though. So you know how that go. So the homies from North Carolina, my brother told me it was T-Rock, God bless, and two other dudes. They come banging on the door. They trying to get up in there. You know, they're trying to get up in there and the joint. So then my brother and them peep it, and they see there's them dudes. So what they do is they run out, they want to get the hammer. So it's my brother, Wise, and somebody else is in the crib. I can't, I don't know what it is. He told me somebody else is in the crib. I don't want to say them all there, but I said somebody else in the crib, but they all gripped up. My brother, whoever else in the crib, and why they all gripped up. They're like, yo, if these dudes come to this door, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's, gonna, it's crazy. So they're trying to get in the crib, and why I shout out to me, yo, I'm telling you, man, we, and it was, it was having words through the door. Open the door, open the door. So then why I told my brother to get the wigs, just in case police come, whatever, whatever, and they had like a couple of bricks in the crib. So my brother goes to the window, and he's looking out the window to see somebody. He see my man, he said he see my man Speedy that live in the building. And he threw the bricks down to Speedy. So your holy the pull you and the homie grabbed the bricks and took him with him up to his crib and then shit the fuse down when the, when they left. Then they called Polite and then they came back through and then that's when they had left. And and fucking um they changed the spot up so they couldn't have that no more as being a stash crib because dudes was on to it, you know? But but it was some some several times, man. The dudes here, man, polite, and it was going sick, you know? And this was they ever, and they run. Then they beefing with Killer Ben for Fort Green. It was going hard, son. They was beefing hard, shootouts and everything. And they went over there and shot up his door. They knocked on his door and shot the, and, and, and when they said who, they shot the door, man. And that's when Killer Ben's brother got killed. He was sleeping on the couch, the little kid. And, and the straight bullet killed him. Young kid, man, fucked up, you know? And, and 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 when they beef like that, you know that shit bullet has no names, man. It was it was banging out like that, but they took it to their doorstep, man. And when they said who, they just aired it out, man. Shorty was sleeping on the couch. It was on the news and everything, man. Newspaper and everything. So now these dudes is making it hot, and it's crazy, you know. And it's crazy right now, and they running, so they leave New York. They go to Maryland and North Carolina and all that shit, you know. And whoever polite went, man. Like shit follows, you know. And we went to North Carolina one time, and they out there now. And a situation happened out there with this kid named Black. You know, they wanted, you know, he did some shit with some money. They said the girls coming with the money in the train, 
but she never got off the train. So they're out there waiting and waiting. They waited for another train. She never got off the train. You know, North Carolina, in a little town, it'd be like two a day, you know? So when they passed through, nobody came with the train. Again, nobody came with the train. So Polite was out there and World was out there with Polite at that time. So they told World, they'll hit this dude. World, like, what the fuck, you know? And it's him. He violated. So World took the hammer. I like he was gonna go do that move, but World was like, fuck that. World was young. He was young at that time. Like, fuck that. He did. He hitchhiked to Virginia. I don't even know how he made it to Virginia, my nigga. <laughs> but he got to Virginia. He made some phone calls to my man. My man sent him some money. He took the train back to New York. He didn't get involved in that shit, you know? And mm. and, and and that's when that shit happened. And then now, they still got it. Never had. So Knowledge News out there. So, you know, Knowledge put that work in. They left him. Kid Black. They left him in North Carolina. Put him in the car. Drove him in the woods and left him. The next day, lads, when the shit come on the paper... They, they found the body and they said he was in there with like 20, 30 cash found through the trunk. The money they was looking for all the time was in the fucking trunk of the car. They never checked the trunk. And I guess he was trying to stash it from them and hide it from them, whatever it was. And the money all along was in the fucking trunk. The nigga was like, what the fuck? What they gonna do? You know what I mean? They, they, you know what I mean? they killed him, man. And they didn't even get the money. But he had the money though. He did the, the bullshit. But whatever, you know? So then they come home. And after they're doing this, they're still ripping and running, you know, doing what they do. And they just put a lot of, a lot of heat, man, everywhere, man. Then they came home and was trying to get at Will for a second. Like, like, he ran, he was scared or whatever the situation was. But, you know, Will was young, man. You know, put a gun in his hand for my children. He, got to, he wasn't with that. You know, like I said, he wasn't brought up like that. You know, but it happened. So then I'm going I'm to I'm fast forward years later, right? That's, that's the story with them dudes, how they was running, how they was doing everything, and they kept their shit going. They kept that gun going. You know? they, they, uh, they was hustling, but they was doing the gun game with that, and that's all mixed, though. You know, especially killing a little kid like that, news, making all this shit going on. So then now, years later, man, I see, I'm up I'm town in Harlem. I'm in Harlem. I see for like, I see for like, I know you're going to run. He's on America's Most Wanted. They looking for him. Knowledge was already locked up. Knowledge already got locked up in Maryland somewhere. And he's in there fighting the case. And he was They're complaining about his fucking head hurting They're and shit. Much. You know how he was in jail. They don't, they don't come to that cell. He had a brain aneurysm. He died in jail. You know? But Michael got nothing. Michael was fighting the case. But Blake was the only one of the one. He was running. He was running. So the light is from your projects? The light from Bedford Avenue. From Bedford Avenue. Right around the corner. Right around the corner. And Polite running. Feet, turn right at no, the end Polite of the running. Road. He's running. Everybody, his whole team is gone. They locked up. He's gone. You know? So I'm in Harlem on 125th. It was like Harlem week. And he pull up. I pull up. I said, oh, shit. What up? What up, Mikey? Now, he jumped out a little hoopty. You know what I mean? He's looking crazy to me. You know what I mean? Looking like he ready to do whatever he got to do. You know what I mean? He got the hoodie on. And it's looking crazy. I'm like, yo, this ain't, this ain't to me. Damn. Looking, looking grimy, you know what I mean? Like, you're gonna run thirsty. So I'm like, yo, hey, yo, Mikey, I need you, man. You know, I know, you know, I need you, son. Like, I, I, I need you to make some moves for me. Got some shit. I'm looking at this thing like this nigga trying to get me. Like, you crazy, you know? And he looking crazy, and we kicking it. And uh, I bust him off. I bust him off. Gave him his number, I bust him off. And two, three days after that, Shawar and Rad come up down to see me. You feel me? Now, Shawar and Rad come to see me. We kicking it, Rad from Grand Ave. Man, Rav from Grand Avenue, Sherrod. They come see me. We kicking it. And I see, yo, Sherrod, yo, I see Polite, man. He came up here. He said, word, word. But yeah, remember Polite booked him years ago, even though they dead at that shit, whatever. But he never regained from that, you know what I mean? Sherrod would still get money, but he always, you know, that was the crazy L for him. You know, he never redeemed himself from that L with, with Polite, I mean. So then how? He's telling me all this and that, and, I, and I'm putting him on. How did do Sherrod? I ain't know he did it, but he went back and told Polite. I guess he saw Polite after that. Somehow, and he told me like, yo, Mike, he saw you uptown. He told me he was looking crazy. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? He told somebody. I don't know if he told Polite, maybe, but he told somebody, and somebody got back to play, right? So mind you, fast forward two weeks after the situation, there's something going on in the Apollo. I go to the Apollo, my dude, and I'm up in there chilling. It was a concert. I don't know who was it. Some rappers, you know, no DJ Clark Kent was in there. It was a show, man. It was a show. We up in there. I want to say it's a biggie or somebody, whatever, bad boy shit, whatever it was. One time, I hear somebody say, yo, Mikey, I turned around, my nigga, it was polite, yo. 
I said, what the fuck? Now, mind you, remember I saw him how he was looking? Remember I saw his friend now, right? Mm-hmm. This nigga was looking like motherfucking coming to America. Remember Eddie Murphy? I mean, when the pops came to America? This nigga had the long mink on, the diamonds on his head, the diamonds in his head, the, a ring on every finger. You feel me? He had the MCM jacket with the a fur. I'm like, yo. He's like, yeah, nigga, you know, you know my situation because he was on the go. He was running, so I guess he was making his moves. He'd be on the low. He was like, yeah, niggas out here thinking I'm fucked up. You know, I'm never fucked up. I told you that. You know what I mean? I'm good. I wanted to fuck with you, son. But you went and told Shiraz. I'm like, wow. I'm looking at this nigga. He said, but that's over with, man. Shiraz got what he deserved. And I know you hear about my name. And I never did nothing to nobody that ain't deserved it, man. You know what I mean? So maybe you ain't want to fuck with me for what you hear about me, but I ain't do nothing. I never just, nobody deserves it. If niggas real with me, I'm real with them. You seen how my team was before. I respect that. He's like, but we ain't gonna talk about that. Let's go get a drink. We went to the bar. I ordered me a drink. He said, nah, nigga, give my man a bottle. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? He bought a bottle of Don P. We sipping, yada, yada, yada. When the show was over, he made a phone call. And now you leave out the power of the front door. That nigga dipped out the side door, gave his security some money, and dipped. Now, mind you, he on the run from murders and everything. But I was like, wow. That shit fucked me out. Like, man, you never judge a book by his cover, man. And that was a money getting dude, yo. He got murdered out of town. He ended up getting murdered in, in, in I think, Maryland, a DC area. You know, they ended up catching up to him, you know, because his karma came around, I guess, you know. And, and, and end up getting him, man. But that was a that was a money getting dude, man. Light, Micah, and knowledge. Them dudes was about it, son. It's about it. And, you know, knowledge for knowledge from LG, you know. We have some strong, some strong, some strong history in LG, man, that came through there, man. Even everybody should come through LG. You know, even like Got Tony from East New York. He used to fuck with Tawan. The boosting chicks I was telling you about. And and he ain't got hit up. He ain't got hit up and fucking um and Kingston and Chu in 1988. I remember the dice game. And he came back and he was fucking with Tawana and he was fucking with We took care of him, man. Like he did a Tupac movie before Tupac, man. He left out the hospital, wrapped up, snuck out the hospital and all that good shit because he didn't know they going to kill him. And he came to LG, man. 456, man. He was up in LG and we took care of him, man. We took care of him, man. He know that. If he in, he know that. We took care of him. Little LG niggas, me, Hedo, you know, Blackmail, Jimbo. We was all around, man. Took care of him, man, and running back to, to the health that he needs to be, man. My man Moose, we took care of God. I was living in LG for like the whole summer, man, and he, he redeemed himself and got back on his feet, you know, and did his thing, man. But we have some good dudes, man, that came through LG, that respected LG, and that's why LG got that love, man, because you know, we give that love and we get that love, you know. And polite, Micah, and knowledge, though, them boys was getting it, man. How polite was older than you? But like he was older than me. He was my brother. Age. He was in my brother class. Him and my brother went to school. He was older than me, but he knew me. He knew my hustle, and he, he used to have other people like faces out there for him. So he needed someone he could trust, and he knew I'm about that dollar. I'm about that money. I don't fuck around. You know what I mean? But I was always taught at the young age: when you owe, you pay. When you owe, you pay. You know, you don't owe nobody, especially in this game. You know what I mean? Because I always clear my tabs. I always did what I had to do. Even if I got to wait for the back pay in the long run, it's going to come back. So he knew my law. He knew how Shabar and them and Moose was grooming me. I was young. But I was watching these niggas move. And and I, one thing about me, I learned what not to do for these niggas. You know? Because everybody, everybody should know what common sense what to do. But when you learn what not to do, that's how you prosper. And that's how you get better. And that's how you succeed in life. Because you, you, you can't teach common sense, bro. You know what I mean? So you should know what not to do, right? You should know what to do in life. But when you learn what not to do, that's when you're going to see the change, bro. And that's when you're going to see, you know what I mean? And that's what I learned from these dudes. Because these dudes getting money, man. They was getting a hell of a lot of money. But they was shooting niggas for this. Shooting niggas for that dumb shit, dumb shit. And, and, and it don't mix. It don't mix. And, and that's what happened with this. That was a downfall of a lot of good dudes that I know. You know? That downfall. Don't get me wrong, some shit, some shit gotta happen. But if it gotta happen, I'm talking about really gotta happen, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do and live with that, you know? But a lot of shit I seen was senseless, man. Like, the whole LG shit was senseless, man. The whole LG was senseless, man. And we gotta get that shit back to to, to the LG love that it was, man. And I, know, and I know we got a lot of homies out here listening and vibing, but LG was solid official dudes, man. 
You know, and a lot of dudes came out of LG, right, man? And a lot of dudes love coming to LG. You know what I mean? And uh, that's a snap of fact right there, bro. Yo, but that was some that was some deep shit about um how that sound travel, you know, sound travels at 1,120 feet per second, man. Like, you just, you gotta be careful. I be telling niggas that. Never, a, a OG told me that back in the days, yo. Never let another motherfucker know how you feel about somebody else. You understand Bro, what I'm yep. saying? Cause one yep. loose lip, that shit'll get you yep. murdered. Now, just say, just say he came up to me and boom, 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 you know? And, and Shuan, I was mad at Shuan for that. Cause whoever he told or whatever he did, whatever, but polite respect there, and he had respect for me. Not only that, he respected my brother. Cause remember, I just told you, my brother him went to school, you know? My brother played a good part in, in all the shit that I do. And a lot of dudes that I met, even though he never got into that, that life like I did, but they respected my brother. And that's why I re that's why I love it's always good a big brother, son. That's my big brother for life, you know what I mean? And LG niggas respect him. He was down with the best of them. You know what I mean? He always held me down. He always fought he had to you know growing up in LG, he had to fight for himself. So after he fighting for himself, or your brother over there get be fucking with your brother. Now you gotta go fight for me over there. That's brother love, son. That's why I always got love for my brother, man. And always back as island story, I told everything. Respect, son. And I love my bro. And on the screen for that play, was like, yo. Well, I feel my man, son, you know, I said, I would never, you know, never, he, exact words, I never forget it, man, he looked in my eyes and said, he never did nothing to nobody that ain't deserve and I believed him, son, that look he gave me, I believed him, but he had too much baggage and too much issue, he's an American boss one, if I wanted to fuck with him, I couldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, was, yeah. At the end of the day, that nigga was on the run for major shit. Like yes. you putting yourself yes. in a crazy line of fire for fucking with that nigga. Yes. Like that. I'm not gonna do that. He had to understand. That's why he did that. But he just ain't like the way I went back and did it. And I did it. And I and, and I was me. That was my back. I learned from that to not do that again. Cause also look at it. I looked at him like he was just like, oh, he's about to rob me. Oh, he ain't gonna get me. He's like, and look, can I see him two weeks later looking like that? Looking on a whole different page. But he couldn't enjoy his money now. He can't enjoy that lifestyle now. He can't enjoy the do the things he liked to do because he fucked up. You know what I mean? Fucked up big time. And like I said, I know they were told they could all take that shit back, but they can't. How long you how long you think he was out there on the run? He was on the run for a good two, three years, man. He was on the run for a good man. He had a good run, a little run, whatever you call that a good run. But he ended up getting killed. Nala died in jail. Micah did his time. Truth did. Micah home. He doing good. He doing good. You know what I mean? He home now. Micah gave him some time, man. 30 years, something like that. They gave him some time, man. They was looking for them boys for some shit. They were looking for them boys for some shit. They were doing some shit, you know? And they was out of town. Killing it with Maryland, North Carolina. And they left something in Maryland. They left something in North Carolina. They left something in New York. A little kid in New York. Come on, man. It's a matter of time. And he can't fault me for not wanting to jump in that fire. I'm not jumping in that fire. I can't. I can't, you know? But what I did wrong was I should not have spoke on something that I shouldn't have. For. Like you said, that shit travels. And that's what people need to learn. You know what I mean? You run like that in the mouth, you should have to go. Yo, if you a diehard supporter or you appreciate what I'm doing over here on this channel, feel free to send me a Cash App donation. This my Cash App right here, Gen Pop Fam. You heard? I appreciate all those donations and I'm gonna continue to work hard to bring y'all the best stories and the best content I could find. You're if you need a collab, hit me up. You heard? Cause you know I do this rap thing for real, not for fake. Check my resume, it's stupid. You know, I was gonna leave this one alone, but then I felt like I can't deprive the people of such an outrageous story. So get ready for the full length movie story. The story of turquoise serial killer in the projects. I don't know if y'all ready for this.